welcome to episode 3 of this grand journey from Luxor to Cairo. For those of you who have not yet watched the previous episodes, you can find the links in the description. We are now sailing towards Tel Al Amarna. So well, we are now on our third day of sailing on this uh, beautiful Moving Peak Darakum cruise from Luxor to Cairo. And let me introduce to you Ms. Shireen. Uh, she is the marketing and communications manager of Movement Peak Hotels in Egypt. Pleasure to have you with us, Conrad. Thank Welcome you very to much. Egypt. Thank you. And our good friend Amgad, the, the cluster director of uh, sales and marketing of Movement Peak uh, Nile Cruises. And my good friend here, Amir, once again, uh, the organizer. So, well, yes, I mean, it's, it's been a fantastic uh, two days already. I'm really enjoying this. It's been a very different atmosphere. Uh, if you can see in the background, we're sailing. It's so green on both the sides of the banks. This really showcases the true Egypt. Yes, the, the best thing I like about the uh, long cruises, uh, Conrad, is like they're giving you a different experience off the beaten track. Like you have more than 365 boats roaming between Luxor and Aswan, which is an amazing itinerary. But imagine going the other way, all the way to Cairo. Like you've got the best of both worlds. Different, uh, different sites to visit, different excursions that many people do not really have the chance to do, and the serenity. Like the yeah. many uh, days of pure sailing, where you can enjoy Egyptians doing the rituals the, that did not change like 1500 years ago. They're still farming their lands with the same way. Uh, kids are waving on both sides. Right. It's kind of a very friendly and serene uh, setting. Definitely. And uh, I need to add something, Shireen. This one is a special cruise, actually, because we are celebrating 100 trips between Cairo and Aswan throughout the past 10 years, and we have almost uh, uh, made 100,000 kilometers wow. throughout the last 10 years. And by the way, we are the only cruise ship uh, branded under Novotic that we've done such uh, a great uh, uh, achievement throughout the past years. Uh, let me add to this, Conrad, <clears throat> and you know, I always go back to history and uh, this is where it all started. When Herodot uh, described Egypt, he started to speak about the Nile and um, it's inevitable that when we do the Golden Triangle, this is where it all starts. Even Sir Thomas Cook, when he started uh, uh, during the British time in Egypt when they started to have these organized tours on the Nile cruises he started with the Nile so really we are uh, appreciating what we are doing guys and uh, you are just giving that sense of luxury we are sailing through history this is amazing in a luxury boat exactly well, actually, Conrad uh, uh, and Amir, I, I find the Golden Triangle trip is very nice and very, but yet it's offering too, too much to absorb for the guests. Why don't they end it with a relaxation in one of our Red Sea resorts like run by Mervyn Peak? I think that's a good idea, Amir. We should do that. No? So, well, yes, I think uh, we also suggest you after you finish this uh, cruise, you go to one of these beautiful properties of Mervyn Peak in the Red Sea and enjoy a relaxed holiday. So, guys, for this, you need to subscribe hit the notification bell and stay tuned for the alerts when we start posting these episodes on the resorts of Movement Peak in the Red Sea. That's the Tawadros Monastery. We have just passed the monastery of uh, Tawadroth al uh, one of the most famous here in the south of Egypt in the government of uh, Asyut. Uh, it was dedicated to the one uh, of the uh, famous people during the time of the Roman Prince Tawadroth al who stayed here for a long time. He was for the Christianity and he supported the early Christians. Therefore, uh, the uh, Christians appreciated that so much and uh, this monastery was named after him. He uh, came here in order uh, to meet his father. And uh, now uh, this monastery is very big and it contains four churches. Two of them are very old and they were cut in the rocks. And another new one is dedicated to Virgin Mary and one is dedicated to 
uh, the saint Abanu bin Nihisi, who was a, a child and he was also a, a, a big support for the Christianity. Uh, he is considered as a saint. Some of the monks are working here uh, now and they are cultivating the land, they are uh, producing some uh, products and objects and they uh, sell it for good prices to the church. So, and the Christians can buy it for good price as well. Just arriving in Tel El Amarna. The boat will be docked here tonight and tomorrow morning we'll be going on a very nice tour. So we have just arrived now in Tunal Gabal and Ahmed will tell you more about this place. Uh, Tunal Gabal, this is a very important archaeological site. The ancient name was Tawinit, the land of the rabbit. The emblem of this site was the rabbit and it is a huge cemetery. The most important tomb is the tomb of the god, Tot, the god of the writing, the god of the wisdom, who was worshipped in two forms, as a bird, as an ibis or as a baboon. And the Egyptians used to uh, mummify both of them and to bury to bury them here in this uh, tomb. The estimated area of this, uh, the estimated area here is about uh, 250,000 square meter <laughs> under the ground with so many galleries, so many rooms, so many streets with 100,000 of coffins, either wooden or stone coffins to place this mummified uh, ibis. This is something very special here. The main god of this site was Tot. No, it was built under the ground because it's a uh, tomb. Yes, it's a tomb. See? Okay. Selim is a Ah, the stairs here are the... To the right hand side. This is, uh, how, this is baboon you'll find two small columns and the offering tables they used to uh, here offer for this god like the cemeteries nowadays yes this is a a real mummy, original one of the ibis, and they used to mummify the whole bird. They didn't take the internal organs outside, uh, like what they did with the uh, human, because of its a small size. So the whole bird must be embalmed and mummified like that. And after that, they are going to place it uh, in uh, stone coffins or wooden coffins or pottery pots, and you will find thousands of them. Uh, here, the god of the wisdom, the god of the writing, baby Ibis. 
How old are these uh, galleries, you said? Uh, these galleries, we are not quite sure about uh, that, but here it is estimated uh, to be uh, made in the uh, 4th century BC, but maybe earlier before that. We can't, we, we, no cartouches of kings, mm -hmm. so it's difficult to know. That was an amazing experience and if you'd like to do similar experiences, uh, you need to be on a Nile cruise. Do contact me, my details are in the description and uh, I'll be happy to offer you the best packages. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, uh, you are going to visit now the tomb of Isadora, the murder of love. Here, uh, the most important monuments is the tomb of uh, Betozairus, of course, the highlight, the tomb of Badikab, and the uh, tomb of uh, Isadora. The tomb of Isadora, you will find that in We will now visit the tomb of Petosiris, which was uh, excavated and restored in the 1920s. You notice something here that on the top of Tot, you will find here not the sun, the moon, the, the, the full moon and the crescent moon, because Tot was also the god of the moon. This is on side. This is older. We call it here the Brunawus, and this is the Nawus. The Brunawus is a rectangular room, okay? Dedicated to Betozairus, his father and his brother. And you will find here, what is it? You will find here daily life scenes from the life. And here from the underworld and funerary scenes. This is a difference. Another, uh, another thing, you will find here the Greek influence or the Greek art and here the ancient Egyptian art. So this is an amazing combination. Here what they are doing, here the uh, harvest of the uh, on the top, the harvest of the wheat, the harvest of the grain. We are now in the northern palace uh, of uh, Kinatun, uh, which was built for the harem, especially for his wife Kia, and she is the mother of King Tutankhamun, and Tutankhamun was born here. So this is a very important archaeological site. Also, Merit Aton, one of the daughters of Akhenaten, lived here. Uh, the Egyptians concentrated more on the House of the Eternity. They built their tombs and their temples of stone, limestone, sandstone, granite. But the uh, houses of the first life were built of uh, uh, mud brick and wood. So it is uh, not common to find the remains of a house. So this is a very good example uh, and highlight here uh, to see the remains of the one of the royal palaces which were built here, including the uh, room of the throne, a window of appearance, uh, 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 kitchen, uh, the garden, you can see even here the palms uh, uh, and the trees of this garden, so it is a very important site. Okay, 
this is for Nefertiti, which is unfinished. Here, this very well. Very well. Now, okay. uh, this is uh, the uh, section of the DG, which is unfinished. Uh, the style of the temple was different from the style of the temple that we have visited, because the temple that we have visited consists of pylon, uh, entrance, first hall of column, second hall of column, and sanctuary for the statue of the god. But this god has no statue. Therefore, this temple of Aton was opened, was exposed to the sun rays. The sun must come everywhere. So this was the difference okay, between this and this. <laughs> Well, and here, this is the solar disk sending its rays, the main god of uh, Akhenaton, and here it was some kind of safe box in order to keep the uh, precious things that the king will need in the afterlife. But if you look here to the ceiling, it's unfinished, and even the uh, pillars here uh, are not uh, well uh, decorated, and the sarcophagus was found in the valley of the king. So we are now visiting the northern tombs and uh, it requires a climb of 180 steps. This is a small temple of uh, Amarna or the small temple of uh, Aton which is located in Amarna uh, city which was the capital of Akhenaton and Nefertiti. We can see the remains of this temple, two columns. So all right back on the boat and time for lunch. Assalamu alaikum. Thank you. So today is the Italian buffet. So here we have mushroom soup and this is uh, minestrone soup. So here we have a selection of Italian bread and pizza. So this is herbs with rice, meatballs with tomato sauce, Italian chicken, stuffed eggplant, Lasagna with beef, fried calamari, and this is salmon. Mm -hmm. 
After sailing for around four hours from Tel Al Amarna, we have now arrived in Minya. The boat will be docked here overnight and will be visiting Beni Hassan tomorrow. So it's dinner time and it's uh, Indian buffet tonight. So this is curry lentil soup, muli gatawni soup, wide variety of breads. The choice of different salads, cheese and vegetables. For the main course, we have biryani rice, chana masala, chicken tikka, dal mansoor, spinach and coconut milk, and grilled fish with curry sauce. We also have a live station for pasta. Here's a wide variety of different desserts. So that brings us to the end of episode 3 and hope you have enjoyed it. If you did, to like, comment and subscribe. If you like to book such experiences, contact me for the best packages. You can find my contact details in the description. Stay tuned to episode 4.